Hello everyone, Amanda here. Today I've got a fantastic tutorial for you making these book plates out of scraps and bits and bobs as an alternative to purchasing perhaps a more expensive metal versions. They're easy to do, there's different variations. I'm going to discuss hints and tips along the way of ideas of how you can uh, you know, add variety to this, uh, different ways of using them and more importantly I'm going to show you exactly how to make them. And you can make these even if you don't have the same things as me. I'll talk about that uh, as we progress. So get comfort and let's make some embellishments. Okay, so I'm making mine out of cardstock. You could use cereal boxes, you can use anything. And um, these are strips of leftover um, craft card from making journaling tags, etc. or covers. I always save them. So what you want is, um, you want to go for approximately one inch in depth. Obviously, you know, as you um, experiment with these yourself, you might want to make them in sizes that suit yourself. This is what I've done. So one inch wide by three and one eighth, which sounds a bizarre size again. It's just the size that I decided I wanted um, after I'd done the fancy parts. It's just just what I need, it, just right for the project that I'm going to use them on. So I'm going to cut two because I'm going to layer them up. I'm going to double layer these um, and you'll see why as we progress and I'll explain. So then this is where you use what you've got and this is one of the things that I um, talk about a lot on my channel whenever you see anything that I make try and th if you don't have the same things think to yourself what have I got in my crafty collection that I can get similar results with um, you know and uh, just use that so to make the ends fancy which you don't have to you could leave it rectangle and plain I happen to have quite a few decorative punches that do different shapes of tabs at the end so I've got this one um, it does work with this one as well which even though it's a lot bigger and um, you can put a smaller size through and you know you can get yourself a decorative edge but this one's my favorite like I say have a look in your punches in your dies see what you've got so this one I'm going to use this one here and slot this through now with this punch I know that I need to check underneath um, and line it up not not um, <laughs> take for granted that the punch is going to punch it nicely You've got to give it a bit of help, okay? And I'm going to punch both ends. Now, if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Okay. And I'm making these for a particular project that I'm doing. I'll do a tutorial on that, and you will see me using these on that project. But I thought I'd do this as a separate tutorial. Um, so I'm doing two the same. So remember these are three and one eighth by one inch and then you just want to somehow make a decorative shape at each end. This is just what I'm choosing to do because I've got it. Um, you know, you could just trim them off at an angle with some scissors. It really doesn't matter. Alright, so I'm going to put one to one side and then one I'm going to die cut. If you don't have rectangular dies you could mark out a rectangle with your pencil and cut it with a craft knife or a pair of scissors. I just happen to have this nice small die which is just a lovely size. So I put that on there, put it through my big shot and I end up with this. Now I have these left over okay, which I'm going to save and I've also cut some more out in a different colour. Because these, you can um, stamp on them and add them to your clusters, things like that. Loads of stuff. And then with the, if you do them in another colour, you then you could then layer that and stamp on it and slot it inside when we've completed it, if you so desire. Right, so then what I'm going to do is, because it's craft card, it needs quite dark distress ink if you're going to distress it. So I'm using walnut stain. And first of all, I'm going to go in, mine's like scalloped there, so I'm just going to go in there first and the teeth of the scallops there will just pick that ink up nicely. And then I'm just going to distress all the way around. Okay, I'm going to do this, uh, just flick around the edges of this one. You're not going to see it, it's layering up for thickness, uh, you know, to just make it a little bit more prominent from your project um, to give a little bit of kind of a layered look. 
So then what you want to do is you want to put your two pieces together, okay, not gluing them down or anything like that, you're just lining them up pretty much the same. We'll just turn it around. They're not going to be perfect because you're never going to get two items that you've punched or cut exactly the same unless you're, you know, yeah, pretty awesome. Okay, and then put them both together. Now, if you want the 4 mil um, eyelets, then get your copper dial and use the appropriate, you know, punch. If you want um, small metal brads, you need the smaller one or poke a hole with a pokey tool. All right, so I'm not using the small, smaller metal brads. I'm going to, I like the rivets, eyelets, whatever. So I'm just going to punch, kind of, just look central. It's very much done by eye. I'm just looking central. I was probably a little bit too far down that, to be honest, but not too aware. Okay, and then um, I'm just actually going to do that again. I've, I've just done that a little bit too far down. No, in fact, no, it's fine. We'll use it. It doesn't matter. We'll manage. Okay, then what you want to do is, well, what I've done is I've heat embossed it with clear embossing powder. So rather than go through all of that on camera, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> so basically I've just pressed this shape into my embossing ink and then I've used a clear embossing powder and I've heat set it. Okay, uh, let me find one to layer it up with and I'm going to layer it up on this one here. So I just need to redo the holes on this one. This one's better. Um, you can see on this one that I just did, the holes were maybe a little bit too close to the edge. This one have come in a bit further. So this is really what you're looking for. All right, so then I'm just going to go back in to where I can already see the hole. And because this back one doesn't have one. You think you've prepped in ahead of time and uh, something sometimes crops up. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some eyelets without tipping them all over my desk, hopefully. You'll have to apologise if you can uh, hear doors etc. It's weekend and my family's home, I can't... Um, I should tie them up and put them in the garage, but, you know, I didn't think. Okay, so then I'm going to set that for us. Now, these don't always set nicely. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. It is kind of look of the draw because they're just cheap ones that I got from Amazon. Um, but, yeah, it doesn't look like it's doing so bad. Give it a squeeze. Okay, and that makes your basic frame. Alright, so then from there, it's just deciding what you want to do and how you want to use it. Now, because we've not used any glue, the top and the bottom is open, so you can slide whatever you want in there. Okay, so what I have done with quite a few of them, I've got some um, book page or writing, a dictionary page as a background, and then, you know, slid some words. Maybe you've got... I did have, I'm going to use this one, which is um, a word from, I think it's from My Parch Prints. I'm going to slide in some, see if I can find something to just go underneath. Let me have a look what I've got. I'm literally going through scraps that are on my desk here and uh, using things. I'll just use a bit of book page. Oh, yeah. Just use a bit of book page because you, you're not going to see an awful lot of it. All right, so let's have a look. I'll just start off with that shirt. So like I say, you can have them with the brads, okay? I've done these ones with large brads and I've done these with the cheap paper fasteners and these are a lot larger than normal brads. I've coloured that in with a sharper, a black sharper so that it looks black and it looks fine. I think it looks quite cool. If you want the smaller brads, like I say, like, let me show you, like these ones, 
and then obviously poke a smaller hole, a smaller, smaller hole. Right, so I'm just going to assess. What size I need and don't need to be perfect, just roughly. Okay. Better to have it too big than too small. And that will just slide in there like so as your little background. Okay. And because nothing's glued down, um you can move it about, you can change your mind. Um, so they're not you don't need to glue them down they're not going to fall out okay and then I'm going to put this one in so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller and I may well just glue this one to that bit of paper alrighty just concentrating because <laughs> I don't want to ruin this little word I need to make some of my own on the PC. Okay, and then I can just lay that in there like so. Get off. Bit of glue. Okay, and then I'll show you another version of how I made the dangle. Okay, so that will, oops, turn it the right way around. That will glue in there like so. And then without wanting to give my project away that I'm making these will go on um, on a project say this and it'll go like that to the side as like a decoration on the bottom of my project okay so so there's another one like I say that's just got random stamped date in it just embellishments they don't have to you don't have to put sentiments on everything um, so this one is a little hanging charm so I can hang that off a page or off a tag or off of anything um, so I'll quickly show you how I made that one I'll grab another one of these that's already done okay and I will go through the same process I'm lining them up pin the holes in okay what so you could um, use any if you don't have craft card use black use white and distress it with distress ink use like I say cereal box maybe you've got black embossing ink you could emboss it with black black ink in fact I've got some I might try that loads of variations um Just think, what have I got in my collection? What have I got that I can make that with? You know, or a variation of it that's got stuck. Urgh. That happens sometimes with these brads. Uh, get off. Sometimes they just don't squash right for some reason and I just have to do them again. I don't know why that is. These things are sent to try us. <laughs> Get that back in now. Try it again. Sometimes I just don't squish right. But the price of the, you know, the We Are Memory Keepers ones, they're a ridiculous amount of money. <laughs> well, they're not ridiculous, you know, they're like, what are they, about a fat for. Uh, about four or five pound whereas these are like two for five times more um, there's only there we go there's only the odd ones that don't squash right most of them have been fine to be honest and do the next one I don't know if you can tell by my voice but I'm absolutely full of cold I don't know where it's come from not even around anybody that's got any flipping germs. It's well annoying. Anyway. Right, so we've got a little charm there. I've got one of these little ball, light bulb pin, pins, whatever you call them. And then 
what I've done for these, you could use um, ideas of what you could use. Washi tape, have a look in your scrapbooking paper. You just need something that's dinky and small. So what I've used is these that Eileen sent me. Um, she sent me these in a little rack the other day. So let's find one that's going to fit with small butterflies. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter if you, you know, if some of it's chopped off. Uh, I'm not going to show up them, are they? Let's have a look. Which ones shall we have? These are cute. Cute, cute, cute. I don't really want that darker paper because that's not going to show up. So let's make do a mend with one of these. This one will do. So what I've done is cut it like so. Let's have a look how big it needs to be. I reckon if we trim some of that off, don't matter if we lose the bottom of that butterfly, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I'm a bit there. And then all I've done is I've got that piece of paper and it'll just slide in. And if I need to adjust, adjust it so it'll fit, then you just cut a bit off. Right, let's just trim a bit off because it's catching. Just trim a little bit at a time. Okay. That should just slide in there. Things always work a lot easier when you're not filming. Like I did these other ones in next to no time and now it's been a slippery little sucker. There we go. There we go. Right. So let me just trim it a little bit so that that white's not showing. Okay, slide it back. Centralise it. There we go. All right. Now you could fill that with glossy accents if you want. I mean, I know the devil's in the detail, but I think that's going a bit overboard. <laughs> a good time for that. So then I've just got these little pin, these little like jump rings that I've had in my stash for about 500 years. I can't be bothered using um, jewellery tools. So I, I just open them and then close them. You just pull them one way to open them. But I don't think you need all the tools just for that. Okay, I've added a little charm on the bottom there. All right. And then your little one of these, which I've got billions of them. Garment pins, bulb pins, that's what you want to search for. You can get them fairly cheap. The cheapest place to get anything like this is AliExpress. All right, so there we go. So there we've got a hanging embellishment. Okay, I'll probably go back and stain the back of that. Um, or you could even heat emboss that as well if you want. Like I say, I'm not, I'm not that, uh, not that fuss. Uh, <laughs> and then you've got these ones and these ones, and we've got the ones with the larger um, paper fasteners. And there's another one. So yeah, a lovely, quick, and easy embellishment idea. And I literally used bits of leftover card, book page, and sentiments that I already had cut. So I hope that you find those useful. I hope you'll give them a try, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.